I cannot really understand and I, I will get as far as I, I, I'm, I'm going uh, to understand but uh, I cannot understand what is next week shall we say or uh, the uh, uh, fortnight's time Isaiah is very prolific and he is um, very exact when he talks about the end times he's very exact and uh, Isaiah 25 in Isaiah 25 the prophet praises the Lord <coughs> Isaiah 25 1 2 and 3 please Dan Isaiah 25 1 2 and 3 O oh Lord you are my God I will exalt you I will give thanks to your name for you have worked wonders plans formed long ago with perfect faithfulness for you have made a city into a heap a fortified city into a ruin a palace of strangers is a city no more it will never be rebuilt Therefore, strong people will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will revere you. By his description, we understand the city mentioned in verse 2 is in reference to Babylon. Put, this way, put it this way. Most commentators think that... Uh, it's reference to ba Babylon. What year is this, John? It? Well, it's about uh, 600 BC. There has been a multitude of interpretations, but majority of commentators think so. Revelation 14.8. Revelation 14.8, please, Lynn. Believing survivors who enter the millennium will remember what a powerful city it was, Babylon, and how totally it was destroyed. They and their children will honor the Lord if for no other reason that uh, knowing he could easily do the same to them. Isaiah 25, 4 and 5, please, Sheila. Isaiah 25, 4 and 5. Psalm 3, 3, the psalmist explained, uh, exclaimed, Psalm 3, 3, Derek. Psalm 3, 3, the psalmist
Psalm 3, 3. No. Psalm 3, 3. Yeah. That's 7. You're doing verse 7 there. It's verse 3. 3, 3. 3, 3. Yeah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. And Psalm 91, 2. Psalm 91, 2, please, Nancy. Psalm 91, 2, please, Nancy. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Amen. The Lord's protective power will keep the ruthless at bay during his thousand year reign. At the end of it, he will destroy them like he destroyed Babylon. We need to read the next three verses to see what will happen. Isaiah 25, 6 to 8, please die. Isaiah 25, 6 to 8. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Verse 7 states, He will remove the covering cast over the people. At least, at last, we will see him as he really is. And verse 8, He will abolish death and wipe away every tears and the rebuke of his people from off the earth. Let's go out of sequence for the next passage. Isaiah 65, 17 to 25, please mark. Isaiah 65, 17 to 25. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. <coughs> there shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner, being a hundred years old, shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build, and another inhabit. They shall not plant, and another eat. For as the days of the tree are the days of my people, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble.
For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. That's uh, towards the end. In this passage, the prophet makes it clear that the people of the earth will not be immortal during the millennium. Although average lifespans will increase dramatically. Here Isaiah is pointing out to the end of the millennium when God will grant all his people the blessing of immortality. In the previous section we see the first order of business is to celebrate this blessing. And uh, we will celebrate with a great feast of rich foods, choice meats, and fine wines. This may be the only glimpse into eternity in the Bible. How fitting that it should involve gourmet food and, and drink. It shows that uh, we will all be physical beings. Some are, 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 are some, some of the same interests and desires that we have here, but without the negative effects. Imagine sitting down to a huge feast with the entire family of man prepared and hosted by the Creator himself. We'll intuitively know each other with everyone expressing the perfect love that the closest brothers and sisters have for one another. As members of the church, we'll have experienced this sort of thing and we'll take special delight in knowing that now the entire human race will finally be of one accord forever. In verse 9, the Hebrew word for God is Elohim, his creator name, by which our earliest ancestors knew him. The word for Lord is Tetrachamaton. J H W H. These are the four initials that stand for God's old covenant name, spoken reverently and fearfully by Israel. And the word for his salvation is Yeshua, the name of Jesus, mediator of the new covenant the name above all names. From the first man to the last will shout the names of God in praise and thanksgiving. Isaiah 25, 10 and 11, please, Terry. Isaiah 25, 10 and 11. For in this mountain shall the hand of the Lord rest, and Moab shall be trodden down under him, even as straw is trodden down from the dunghill. And he shall spread forth his hands in the midst of them, 
is he that swimmeth, spreading to all his hands to swim. And he shall bring down their pride together with the spoils of their hands. That is, the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain, but Moab will be trampled down under him, as straw is trampled down in the manure. Moab will spread his hands as if to swim, but to no avail. God will bring down their pride despite the cleverness of their hands. He will bring down your fortified walls and lay them low. Now we have a problem here. Because the nation called Moab disappeared from the earth when Nebuchadnezzar destroyed it in the 6th century BC. Therefore, I looked and discovered that most commentators view this reference to Moab as being symbolic of the Lord's enemies in the end of the millennium. I lift my hands. Before he can lead mankind into his eternal destiny, the Lord has to destroy all of his enemies. Speaking of the Lord's responsibility at the end times, Paul wrote 1 Corinthians 15, 25 and 26. Please, Dan. 1 Corinthians 15, 25 and 26. Fifteen, twenty-five, and twenty-six. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be abolished is death. Once he has put down the final rebellion, at the end of the millennium, death will be the only enemy left. Revelation says that death and Hades will be thrown into the lake of fire after the great white throne judgment. And uh, Revelation 2014, please Lynn, Revelation 2014, When that happens, mankind can be made immortal and eternity really can begin. This tells us that millennium believers will receive perfected bodies at that time because no one possessing a sin nature can be made immortal. Now, that is as far as I got. And I really have a problem with the next section. Can you just say what your last sentence? This tells us the millennium believers will be received perfected bodies. 
at that time. Because no one possessing a sin nature. A glorified body, well, yeah. Yeah. Like the ones the thousand yeah. years before. So, can I just ask? Can I ask a question? Oh, good go on. And you go first. I was going to say the non believers will get an eternal body, but you wouldn't call it immortal. I mean, they were still live forever, weren't they? The yeah, yes, yeah. I, 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 I understand. In a place. Yeah. But what, I, what we've seen here, and that's this bit I've been sort of struggling with, um, in the is it Isaiah 65 thing, we, we, we were talking about the. Um, can we just go back to it? Yeah. Remember, yeah. Okay is that there shall no, be no more events an infant of days and an old man that has not filled his days but the child shall die hundreds of years old but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed now what i understand and tell me if i'm wrong is that after after the rapture all right dead in christ rise first the rapture happens all right there's three and a half years i'm not quite sure where we are then and then, they come back and then we all come back with christ into the millennium here yeah. Now, what I don't understand though is I do understand what I do understand is that life will return to the one generation will be like it was to Methuselah. Yeah. So that's why a child, an infant death, will be hundred yeah. years old. Yeah. Okay. There, there's a problem. There's a problem with that. Um Let me ask my question. Yeah, yeah you go, go on, go on, go on. Is what happens to us? Are we immortal from that time? Are there two different types of people? Yes, yeah, it says you'll be made that when you rapture. Yeah, so what I'm thinking is, There's it no appears more. that the people that survive the three and a half years of the tribulation, that are on still Earth. alive on Earth. on Earth, okay, then are restored to, have, to live in 900 years. Okay, the duration of the millennium becomes... Potentially. They could yeah. be cursed if they stand up. Exactly. Yeah. They could, you know, but they still have the possibility of dying early. Yeah. But we are immortal in this period. So there's two different types of people alive. Yeah, best of the and not the second Okay. Um, the first lot get raptured. Us. Yes. Yes. We get raptured, and we start. We we, we come back with Christ, yes. okay, to rule and reign with Him. What about those who are alive and enter the millennium? That's what, uh, That's what I'm saying. Now they will live for a thousand years, yeah. and they will have children. So when, none of us are going to have children, I don't think. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, th those... Yeah, they will have children. That's right. There shall no be more events an infant of days, nor an old man that has not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being in a hundred years old, shall be accursed. In other words, um, a child um, will be counted as a, a, a child at a hundred years. Yeah. 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 And if you lived long in this life, it was generally you lived a good life, and you weren't cursed to die. Yeah, sure. So some, but these days, you could be cursed at a hundred, don't you? Know I mean? Yeah. That wouldn't necessarily be a good blessing no, anymore. No, no, yeah. no, I do see that. What, what does, the, does that? Yeah, so what um, I wanted to just clarify there was that there will be two different types of people. There will be those yeah. that are still mortal, all right, that will be the survivors of the Great Tribulation. They will still be having children, etc. Now, what I understand is, is that because Satan is bound for those thousand years, there will be these people and the children that are born still have not had the choice of whether they choose Christ or not. 
And so only at the end of that, when Satan is released as the deceiver, yeah, few will follow Satan. Mm. But then they have their choice sure. as to whether they follow the Lord or not. That's th that that that's the problem with the next section. Yeah. I have a problem because I have learned over the years uh, one way, yeah. but Isaiah says that it says it another way. Oh. It's interesting though, isn't it? Because we do have these preconceptions about what we taught. Sure. And that, that, that's the, 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 the problem. That, that, that we've been taught yeah. a rapture. And, uh, and, and some, I, I, I have a problem with this. Bear in mind, we've been taught by people that were saved believers 10 years. You're now a believer of 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah. You're probably quite experienced compared to the ones that are doing some of the teaching out there. Yeah, but I, I think it's, it's maybe also just that you, for many years, I didn't really study it. No, we were listening to what everyone else yeah, was. Yeah. yeah, now I'm looking at it. It's very interesting that... Do you I'm, understand that? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Fine. The other I, thing, I, I'm, can I'm, I say one other thing? That yeah. is interesting. I always wonder what we'd be doing our life would be the same in the millennium, and it is. Building houses, living in them. Sure. You know. Sure. Uh, the, 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 the people who are alive in the millennium yeah. will be the same. Yeah. So, However, we will have, have gone. And come back. I hope <laughs> we will have gone. Okay, we'll see what you say next week. What you you think we're not coming back in the millennium? You're not of Spanish Cola with the Mormon show. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I really okay. have a problem. Right. Yeah, we'll, right. we'll wait till next time. We'll, we'll come uh, right. I hope to go on. <laughs> and uh, anyway. It's so interesting, though, isn't it? Yeah. It is. And you know what I found is people are interested. I've just seen, you know, like you start talking to unsaved people about the end times and they want to hear yeah. what you've got to say. Yeah. That's true. Yeah.